holy shit I'm back <laughs> this is weird it is weird it's very weird you see this outfit you guys I know that y'all have never seen it before but I've seen it plenty of times <laughs> I love how this guy that works for the United States Postal Service, trusted government service, <laughs> he just waved me on because he thought that I was going to like stop and wait for him, but I was like, nope, I got a tiny ass car, I can maneuver around your ass. <laughs> he waved at me though. So I appreciate that wave, buddy. Fortunately for you, I'm quicker. <laughs> he still hasn't even come around yet. So, what's I about to say? Steak and shake. Psych and shake. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like I'm dreaming right now. <laughs> we'll just see what happens whenever we get there. It might be fucking horrible. And I might, like, totally regret this decision to go back to my favorite job in the whole world. It's not only my favorite job, it's like my favorite shitty job. See, I really love shitty jobs, you guys. Like, I, uh, really like to bust my ass when I go to work. Mainly because, you know, it makes you feel a lot better about yourself when you do that. And,. I used to have dwindling self-confidence and really and truly the main reason why I don't anymore is because of this particular shitty job and I guess that's why I'm still pulled to it and I'm not the only one it's like everybody that works there has worked there before and they keep coming back because it works if you work it <laughs> but I brought my insure or my my knockoff insure let's be real since I'm partly anorexic and it's it's not in the cards that I'm gonna eat <laughs> so it's like this is what you do when you're mentally ill and you're afraid that you're not going to survive life. You got to accommodate, you got to acclimate, you got to do whatever you possibly can to stay alive in your condition. And a lot of people, they don't, they don't get it. Because they think it's something that can change. And maybe it can if you got, you know, the regular pansy ass depression. But, you know, if you've got like a serious personality disorder like I do, along with another serious personality disorder like I do, um, It's hard to just, you know, write that shit off. And I I wish that people realized that, that it's not something you could just, you know, snap your fingers and say a magical prayer and voila. It's it's not that simple. 
But you know, I'm, ass I'm assuming that there are much simpler things that people deal with than what I deal with. So, you know, maybe, maybe that magical prayer works for you. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me, Vortex, what happens to you? Um. Hold up. We gotta fix this camera situation. Please don't die. <laughs> Please don't die on the way to work. I'm going real fast, you guys. You wanna guess how fast I'm going? 70. I'm actually going past the speed limit. The speed limit is 55. I should slow down. <laughs> The thing is though, everybody goes 70, even when the speed limit is lower, like if they're out on the interstate, they're like, fuck it, I'm on the freeway, I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> That's why people go on the freeway. But, uh... Personality is a special case. Schizophrenia is a special case. You know, it, um, I'm under the impression that, now I could be wrong about this. I'm not saying this is a fact. I'm saying that this is just something that I, it's a theory that I have. I think that bipolar disorder is a hoax. I'm not just saying this because of my personal experience involving bipolar disorder, but it's like everybody I know it's bipolar, it's just like me. They're like quiet borderline, possibly like part schizophrenic. Now it takes a little while for the schizophrenia to set in. Uh, but I feel like it's set in with me. <laughs> when that happened officially, but I know that it happened. <laughs> Cheers to that. See, it's not like you can die from schizophrenia. You can't die from any of these disorders. They'll tell you that, yeah, you can. You're going to kill yourself. I mean, maybe I will. you America I'm not gonna kill myself whenever I get that that gun I'm not gonna blow my head off somebody else might do that and then they'll rule it a suicide because of my condition but that, that's why crazy people are like so easy to fucking castigate and destroy and throw out of society it's because like I mean and this is what people don't understand like why I say that I'm crazy and shit they're like dude you're just asking for trouble, you're asking people to judge you and shit, what? Well, they're gonna say it anyway. When they see me talking to myself non-stop, they're gonna say that I'm fucking nuts. So it's like, why don't I just say it first? People hate it when you take responsibility. They hate it when you take any kind of like personal ownership of anything. They're just like, oh no, 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 no. It's your disease. <laughs> what disease? Depression's not a disease. I mean, I, I know I did that video. Uh, I, I did devote it to Robin Williams. Now, I'm not sure if Robin Williams committed suicide or if he was coerced into committing suicide. And he might have been coerced by, by somebody, uh, by a person, or he might have been coerced by the medication he was on. I'm guessing uh, that the latter is more true. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I have this theory that bipolar disorder doesn't exist. It's just a way to keep people on medication because this medication's so terrible for you. And they're like, all right, well, let, let's figure out a way to make sure that people stay on this shit so that they do kill themselves. Or at the very least, they're not like a danger to society uh, because of their awful thoughts and their... Uh, ability to uh, think cognitively and uh, ask questions. We don't need any of that in society. We need more of 
uh, sh the sheep that continue to vote for lying politicians and uh, people that repeatedly screw them over. <laughs> We want more of those people. We can't have any of these Amy Grosses uh, polluting the planet with their uh, cockamamie theories <laughs> about the disorders that we want to convince the public that possesses them. I mean, if you just go on any website, any search engine, I mean, fuck. They, it's amazing how many pills they have for so many things that I didn't even know existed. And it's like, they're always going to be like, this pill is amazing. This pill will change your life. This pill is what you need to survive. All this crappity crap. And... It's just very, very disturbing how quickly people will buy into this stuff. And this is what I try to tell my parents. Now, I don't blame my parents. Like, I'm not playing the blame game in regards to actual people anymore. I really don't even blame What's Her Face for a lot of the stuff that she did. I mean, she she did it. We're not gonna say her name. We're not, we're not ever saying her name again, okay? Never, never, never. The media has already repeated it enough. She loves it. You think that Ducky has an ego? Jesus Christ, like look at her. This is the third time that she's playing this fucking game of I'm gonna be the president. <laughs> she's been doing this shit. I mean, that's this is what like her whole career is based on. I feel like that that's a politician though. Like that's what they want. They want to be the president. That's why you can trust this one, because that was never his fucking intention. Uh, there's an interview with Donald Trump and Oprah from a long ass time ago, like the 90s. Possibly the 80s, it might possibly be the late 80s, early 90s. But Oprah is interviewing him and she's asking him if he would ever consider running for president. And he tells her, like, only if things were bad enough that it would require him to do that. Guess what? Things got bad enough. Welcome to the world. Love this fucking president. <laughs> you just won't shut up about it. See, that's the thing. That's the thing, like, I, this is why I hate politics, because, like, it's so tempting to talk about it, but at the same time, it's like I want to steer away from it, but I can't help but steer it back because it's like all, the, all these events in society, especially in regards to stand-up comedy. I mean, don't even get me started on Hannah fucking Gatsby. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I think that, and especially being a woman too, having a vagina between my legs, I feel the need to address a lot of these uh, issues that keep coming up because uh, women, ugh. Now it's not a good time to be a woman. It's not a good time to be a woman. It's not a good time to be a comic. It's not a good time to be a free thinker. It's not a good time to uh, be a person. You know, <laughs> like you can't be a person now. It's like you have to, to like prove like how much uh, you give a fuck about a marginalized group or some shit. Or like if you're not, if you're if you're white and, and you're a man or whatever the fuck, <laughs> you've got to like, you know, prove that you're like some sort of ally to like this other group that's like been oppressed or some shit. It's, it's so fucking ridiculous, you guys. Like, this society is just so retarded. Um, anyway... I don't know what point you were trying to make before, but it's gone. <laughs> See, I don't know what time it is. It says it's 6.24 on my clock. I know that that's wrong. <laughs> it's gotta be like two and a half hours ahead. Thing, but I think I 
to take a shit. I didn't do that before I left, and I really should have done that. And you're also drinking coffee. Yeah, I'll take that shit when I get to work. But yeah, Christmas is a couple days from now. I'm probably gonna be working on Christmas. That's mainly the reason why I went back to Steak and Shake, so you can get overtime on Christmas. Um, and I really hate that holiday. And not because I don't love Jesus, but because uh, I do love Jesus. <laughs> oh, I am Jesus. But really, I just hate corporatism in America. And uh, it's not capitalism that I hate. It's corporatism, and it's greed, and it's... Uh, The fetishes, fetishi, fetishization. The fetishization of of like these social norms. Uh, and let's face it, like the holidays, that's that's the best example of social norms. The only reason I like Halloween is because you know you can dress up and be somebody else, and it's fun, and you can scare people too. And that's cool. <laughs> that's why Halloween is the shit. And I kind of wish that I'd been doing videos then, and I, I told myself that I was going to get a camera so that I could go back to the Vortex on Halloween. I'm sorry that I didn't live up to that promise. It won't happen again. I will live up to my campaign promises. I want to be the closest thing to this president as possible. <laughs> job because I really want to make some more money I don't want to be like freaking out about money and wondering like where it's gonna come from next and like it, 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 it feels a lot better you know not just having like two jobs but just the the security that comes from like having two separate places of employment where I bust my ass and I have these groups of people that know me and respect me and um, I, I, I really like this job though. But like, let, let's see if that's still true at the end of the day. <laughs> because I feel like it's some sort of like fantasy that you have. I do better here. You know I do better here. Yes, you do. See, at, at, at the end of today, this shirt, this white shirt that I'm wearing, is going to be covered in, like, all different colors, because I'm probably going to be on the shake station today, which is my favorite thing to do at Steak and Shake. I am nervous, though. I'm nervous because it's been a long time. And this motherfucker just cut in front of me. Didn't even use their fucking turn signal! <laughs> I do have fun when I drive. See, driving is just... It's fun because, like... You can just yell. You can just yell the whole time. Just be in your own little world. crazy to me that people don't want that like I used to like want to be a truck driver so that I could you know just constantly talk to myself for you know like 20 hours straight and I was like dude you can do this anywhere anywhere oh my god okay so that motherfucker that I was just complaining about that was coming in front of me they're like, they're driving all over the road, they don't know where the fuck they're going, and I'll notice, they're doing this number, on their fucking phone. I hope they fucking crash and die. Really and truly. Yeah, that's right, piece of shit. <laughs> God. I have to fucking poo-poo. Please don't say shit like, do it in my mouth.
You're probably gonna get a disease from that shit, just to let you know. <laughs> Literally. Oh, crap. There's a cop. Wonder what they're doing. Wonder where they're going. It's a state trooper. This is the worst part. Waiting at an intersection. I could have masturbated, but I forgot. <laughs> You forgot to masturbate? I know, man. Oh, God. All right. We did it. We made it to work. Pray for me, you guys. Pray that this doesn't end the same way that it always does. In disaster. Oh shit. Okay, so there's this guy that I worked at Wendy's with. I told him about this job. He fucking put his two weeks notice in at Wendy's and came over here and I just saw his car and I'm really fucking excited. <laughs> Let's see what time it is. You're gonna have to leave the house a lot earlier on like uh, school days. School days, yeah. Cause that damn school zone. Those goddamn kids in the public schooling. Why hasn't somebody already shot them up? <laughs> Why do you think they don't do that shit public? Or like, well, they only do that shit public schools. They don't do that shit like private schools. I think I left my phone at the house, you guys. Does it matter, really? I mean, you're going into the store, right? To go to work. What the fuck do you need your phone for anyway? Yeah. That's true. I think that you have it though. You just don't know that you have it. Oh yeah, that's that's probably true. I mean, that's usually the case. I'll have something on me the whole day and like not even know that I have it. I'm like, oh, it was in my pocket the whole time. You know, like when you're looking for your glasses and they're on your face, you know, it's, <laughs> that's the story of my life. Okay, well, I guess I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna go inside and hopefully kick some ass, make some shakes, and dress some sandwiches, and take some orders, you know. <laughs> Typical shit when you work at a restaurant. Um, I always enjoy the chitty chat though, for real. And it's not just because I love to hear my own voices, it's because uh, I, I just, maybe I just need this, I don't know. I need you. Uh, but, uh, till next time. Ciao.